SoCal Connected is made possible through the generous support of the Amundsen Foundation, serving the Los Angeles community since 1952. On tonight's SoCal Connected. When they see a patient, they see money, they see dollar signs. We have to have it or we're going to die. Not only is that insane, but it is incredibly dangerous. Something is drastically wrong. People are dying because of that. They're making a large amount of money off the taxpayers' backs. That affects all of us. Clearly, I'm being ripped off. They are too big to fail. It could be the largest case of Medicare fraud in U.S. history. Companies are making incredible profits while people cannot afford the medicine. And that has added up to a $7 billion business. DaVita is the largest U.S. provider of kidney care services. They're making a large amount of money off the taxpayers' backs. It's not just the taxpayers that are the victims here. It's the health care system. The message from Wall Street is clear. Their business model is greed. Their policies literally are killing people. If you want to get rich, bank on two of America's fastest growing diseases. And we remain number one in dialysis. This is the story of the healthcare profiteers. It's gonna cool and take a little bit longer to make it in the back. It's all the way up though. Bert Robinson is driving to his home away from home. At Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays at three o'clock. This is uh, something I know that I need to do. We're going to a dialysis session. I do uh, three treatments a week, four hours of visit. Robinson has kidney disease. He started dialysis 12 years ago. The machines act like his kidneys, cleansing his blood. When you first find out you're on dialysis, it's almost like, I don't know, I never heard nobody tell me I had cancer, but it was almost like, you know, hey, you don't have much time. We had the Vita Center, and uh, like I say, this is home away from home. Dialysis has been rough for me because um, it took my family, took my wife, took my kids, took my occupation away from me, put me on the income that I, I managed on. <laughs> I managed on. God is good. Because uh, He's still giving me the opportunity to learn how to live with what I'm going through, face what I'm going through, and how to build from what I've been through. And like I tell everybody, it ain't over for me. Not because I'm on dialysis. <laughs> I had to go in there and dialyze, though. I'm trying to live. It ain't over for me. <laughs> The center is about one of 550 in the state, and that number is growing. In 2017, 13 new facilities opened in Los Angeles County alone. Heart disease, diabetes, obesity. They've ravaged communities of color, making them the perfect location for the big business of dialysis. African Americans are three and a half times more likely to have kidney disease requiring dialysis. In Englewood, 
there are more dialysis centers than McDonald's. Eric Muhammad has owned his Englewood Barbershop for 19 years. He's seen the changes in his community. They're talking about all of the, uh, the DeVitas in the area now. Yes. You know, they're popping up all over the place. Yes, they are. I see them in my travels, okay? Yeah. One of my best friends, he, he would go to dialysis, you know. The pastor at my church, he, he's on dialysis. You know, they have to schedule their appointments around going to dialysis three times a week. So I'll get clients call me and, and their, their, their appointments will be based upon their availability after they finish their appointments over there and the days that they're available here. Muhammad supports efforts to help black men in his community get healthy. Clients here get more than a haircut. So uh, we were involved with a uh, hypertension program with Cedar sinai and um, a lot of the shops were given uh, blood pressure monitors so that we can actually monitor the blood pressure of our clients. So they get a haircut and after they get the haircut, we would take the blood pressures. Blood pressure machines in barbershops, dialysis centers on every corner. They are signs of a national epidemic with hot spots right here in Southern California. Growth of kidney disease is an epidemic worldwide. However, there are pockets in the different regions that have a higher incidence of end-stage kidney disease, and Boyle Heights happens to be one of them. So the number of patients that are on dialysis has been growing year over year. This speaks to our epidemic of chronic kidney disease. Dr. Arshia Ghaffari is the medical director of a dialysis clinic at USC's Medical Center. It's one of the largest dialysis units on the West Coast with 59 chairs. In total, we take care of about 350 patients. And it's in Boyle Heights for a reason. It is a lower socioeconomic uh, neighborhood, which leads to obviously food deserts. The choices of foods and the availability of foods is compromised and uh, the rates of obesity is higher, which leads to a much higher rate of diabetes and unregulated high blood pressure. Um, and, and all of this ultimately contributes to more kidney disease. Dialysis is surging in California because people are living longer with the disease. And the only way off these machines is a transplant, but that's nearly impossible. California is exceedingly large, and so the wait time is exceedingly long, on the range of eight to 10 years. If they skip a ship, their, their mortality rate goes up by about 30%. That, so this is serious. It is serious. This is life-saving. And it's expensive. It costs about $89,000 a year to treat a dialysis patient. Taxpayers pick up most of the tab, and this is why. In 1972, President Richard Nixon extended Medicare coverage to people with kidney failure. It's considered one of the greatest accomplishments of the American healthcare system. No one at the time could imagine the staggering epidemic of diabetes now plaguing the U.S. Diabetes is the leading cause of kidney disease. Back then, one official predicted the price tag would be about $2 billion a year by 1982. In 2018, it's $34 billion a year, taking up nearly 1% of the entire federal budget I don't know if it costs that much to do what they do, put two needles in me and filter my blood, but the cost of dialysis that the government putting out that money, <laughs> it's expensive. Unlike Robinson, most people aren't paying attention to how much the epidemic is costing taxpayers, but Wall Street is. The Vita shares rose on the news. Revenue of 17.8 billion euros and nearly all of that is coming from emerging markets. We don't necessarily want to see that there's that much more dialysis going on, but they're making use of it. It's stable, predictable, and there's no shortage of customers. In California, for example, half the state's population either has diabetes or is pre-diabetic. From a healthcare corporation point of view, this is the best of all possible worlds. You're always going to have, for the foreseeable future, a steady stream of patients that need dialysis. Win-win for them. Maybe that's why Warren Buffett is putting his money into dialysis. 
This dialysis play is one of the best baby boomer stories out there. Smart man, that Buffett. For profit companies, DaVita and Fresenius dominate dialysis. And since they control 70% of all dialysis in the United States, uh, they essentially have a monopoly on, on this industry. And they have a gold mine in California. One out of 10 DaVita clinics nationwide are here, and other centers are popping up. I grew up in South Central Los Angeles. We had liquor stores on every corner. When I tell people about DaVita, I tell them, hey, DaVita's like a, a liquor store in South Central LA. They're on every corner. Magellan Hanford has worked as a dialysis nurse in Southern California for 17 years, most of that time with DaVita. He was fired in 2016, he says, for unionizing. He's been a critic of the industry ever since. Patients are often rushed out of the door after treatment. They typically get only 10 to 15 minutes to recover. DeVita refused to comment on Hanford's claims and this story. In a statement, Fresenius emphasized its high level of care. It's all about money. When they see a patient, they see money. They see dollar signs. He claims something changed a few years ago. There was a paradigm shift uh, going on in the dialysis industry. And I, I just noticed that it was no longer geared towards patients. It was uh, geared towards profit. It was after the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare, went into effect. We are done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Suddenly, private insurance companies had to cover all pre-existing conditions, including expensive dialysis. Critics say the dialysis industry saw dollar signs and went to town gaming the system to get patients on private insurance. I have seen them come into dialysis clinics with insurance uh, personnel that they hire and go from chair to chair talking to patients, trying to convert them from their Medi-Cal to private insurance. Insurance companies have accused Avita and American Renal Associates of steering patients to private policies to fatten their profits. Why the push to private insurance? Under Medicare, the reimbursement of a treatment is about $250. But that same treatment under private insurance can bring $650, even $1,300. In its corporate filings, DeVita admits the number of patients with private insurance are a major driver in treatment revenue. And at least one elected official is accusing the industry at times of putting profits ahead of what's best for the patients. We've heard from the patients that, from patients that dialysis clinics have tried to push them away from seeking kidney transplants, which is often the recommended course of treatment. Meanwhile, DeVita's revenue in 2017 was more than $10 billion. So why should consumers pay attention? It drives up the, the insurance rates for, uh, for all of us. All of us that pay private insurance, it drives it up. You wonder why your employer every year is continuing to uh, raise your insurance rates. That's not good for overall society. That's good for the bottom line for these companies, but that's not good for us as, you know, as a people in this country. DeVita, for example, has a reported gross profit margin of 30 percent. Hospitals, in comparison, are in single digits. And we have to do everything we can to control health care costs. Ed Hernandez is chair of the Senate Health Committee. And so there's obscene profits that are now going into that particular industry. And because you only have several or two companies that control 70% of the market, I believe you could also start looking at some type of monopolization. They're making a heck of a lot of money when others aren't. And so the question is why? Government probes into why are mounting. DeVita has paid more than a billion dollars in settlements with the government for, uh, for basically various kickback schemes and overbilling uh, of the Medicare program. No corporate officials have been criminally prosecuted, and the company has not admitted guilt in the settlements. But the headlines don't stop, and the payouts continue. These uh, uh, False Claims Act settlements is basically tolls along the road to getting profits. Attorney Hanagami represents whistleblowers in the healthcare industry. He says these problems with the industry won't stop for one reason. They are too big to fail. But who would step in 
if these places closed. If the government were to blacklist DeVita for alleged fraudulent or criminal activity, uh, the effect would be catastrophic for patients here in L.A. County. The vast majority of them would end up dead. With nearly three out of four patients going to these centers, they really may be too big to fail. The leader is running a monopoly, you know. They're almost like street signs now. They're, they're here. They're here. In fact, they are everywhere, expanding and growing so fast, there are concerns government oversight simply can't keep up. I reviewed dialysis facility surveys that I received from the California Department of Health. I received them through the Freedom of Information Act. In my research that I did, I found that almost every facility was cited for some degree of infection control. Roberta Michaels became an industry watchdog after her father went on dialysis. She's reviewed thousands of pages of state inspection data. Nearly all of the clinics she reviewed had a problem, many minor, but a few major. Monitoring patients is a problem. Aseptic techniques is a problem. Again, back to infection control. When you have the degree of infection control deficiencies that are cited, something is drastically wrong. It's either training, people come in, you do not have to have a background in healthcare. You could walk off the street from working in a department store and be trained as a dialysis technician. SoCal Connected reviewed state deficiency reports from 2014 to 2017 involving clinics in Southern California. About one in four clinics were cited by state health inspectors for problems including medication errors and threatening to discontinue patients' treatments. But more troubling, we found a death at a DeVita clinic in North Hollywood. State inspectors found staff failed to notice a patient's blood pressure had dropped. The patient's vitals had not been checked per protocol. A nurse stated, when employees take breaks, the clinic doesn't have the right number of staff on the unit. The company did not provide a response. DeVita points to achievements like high patient satisfaction ratings and its five-star rankings as an industry leader. Patient care and staffing are now battle cries in a fight over regulating dialysis. Proposition 8 on the November ballot pits big labor against the dialysis industry. If passed, Prop 8 will cap dialysis profits and beef up staffing. If we don't have the staffing that we need, we're basically set up to fail. The No campaign, heavily backed by DeVita, Fresenius, and other dialysis companies have spent more than $100 million to defeat Prop 8 outspending the opposition five to one. The American Nurses Association California opposes Prop 8 because it hurts patients. Industry leaders warn if Prop 8 passes, they will close centers in California. That could devastate minority communities. But when it comes to big money, in the chronic illness business, dialysis is just part of the conversation. Diabetes is the leading cause of kidney failure in the United States. But the three major suppliers of insulin seem to be raising their prices at the same exact time, at the same level. What we've seen from 2002 to 2013, the cost of insulin tripled, which is off the charts. David Lazarus is the consumer columnist for the Los Angeles Times. He also has diabetes. I'm type 1, and that is the autoimmune kind. In other words, the genetic kind, which basically means your pancreas shuts down, leaves for Tahiti, never comes back, and you can't generate insulin anymore. Without the drug, he will die. And like the dialysis industry, a handful of corporations control the treatment Lazarus and millions of others need to live. They own over 80% of the market. They call the shots. Hey, hey, ho, ho, Price County is got to go. And they are the target of outrage over the unexplained rise in the price of their life-saving product. In the past decade, the diabetes epidemic has exploded, and so has the price of insulin. 
a vial has gone from $40 to $130. But this is an everyday thing for me, and I literally live the outrage with my knowledge of the marketplace, with my knowledge of the, of the economy, and with my knowledge of this disease, and I can see clearly I'm being ripped off. You've got three major companies singing their own tune, and we all have to dance to it, and you end up with unconscionable pricing at this point where they're basically reaching into the pockets of what's known as a captive market or a hostage market where people with chronic diseases who have nowhere else to turn or they die have to pay whatever price is being charged. Faced with sticker shock, some patients are now resorting to extreme measures. There are many, many diabetics who are not taking the insulin that they require simply because they can't afford it or they're trying to take what they can afford and stretch it out for as long as they can. Not only is that insane, but it is incredibly dangerous. Right now, I'm definitely rationing out my insulin just due to the fact that it's so expensive for me. I'm eating less throughout the day. I'm trying to eat less carbs, so that way I'm saving my insulin uh, to last as long as I can. Um, and it's hard. 175, 50. Adam Utick of San Diego was diagnosed with type 1 four years ago. He says he's not following doctor's orders because he can't afford to. If I did what the doc my doctor wanted me to do, I'm going to be going through a lot more insulin, which obviously means I'm going to be going through a lot more money. When he was first diagnosed, he started a GoFundMe page to help pay for an insulin pump. And Utick's not alone. Thousands of people have taken to online fundraisers to pay for insulin. Six full boxes of expired sensors. The soaring prices triggered a black market frenzy on Facebook, where people are bartering insulin and related supplies. I have a two-year-old with type 1 diabetes. This person said, I'm on my last two vials of Novolog. Any help would be greatly appreciated. Which is thousands and thousands of dollars. And even with insurance, you know, there are thousands of dollars as well. If you're in an emergency situation or you don't have insurance, this is $285. And you're forced to pay it. These companies know that my, our, any diabetic, our lives depend on insulin. We have to have it or we're going to die. Here's the thing. This isn't new. Insulin has been around since the 1920s. There should be every reason that the prices would go down in the same way that the price of a computer, a PC goes down. The price of a high definition television goes down over time. And yet the price of insulin, like many pharmaceuticals, just keeps going up. There's no explanation economically other than greed as to why these drugs should be going up. They're the same drug that's been around for decades. Greed is also on the minds of a group of Eli Lilly investors. They are asking the drug company if executive compensation is tied to insulin price increases, and if so, rethink it. There's something wrong when people whose lives depend on insulin are not able to afford it. People are dying because of that. And I think Lilly has to, to really reckon with that and, and look at what their pricing strategies are and the impact they're having on people. Although he's not involved in the Eli Lilly situation, Bill Hanagami wouldn't be surprised if the price of insulin is indeed tied to executive bonuses. I do believe that a number of these companies appear to be driven primarily to do whatever they can to maximize profits today by any means necessary. California also has questions for Eli Lilly. The state requires drug companies to report when they're raising prices and explain why. But Eli Lilly hasn't done this, and so far, they're getting away with it. And what's particularly um, frustrating that made me angry with this particular company is that, number one, they're violating the law. They're not giving the state of California advance notice to any increase well, that's pretty, uh, pretty egregious considering that, number one, if they really wanted to help the consumers, they wouldn't just raise the prices, they'd lower the prices. In July, Hernandez, who was also running for lieutenant governor, called Lilly's behavior disingenuous and offensive for flouting California law. Shortly after, this happened. The pharmaceutical drug industry just put a bunch of money into my opponent's campaign against me. 
I'm not surprised Lily, which is deep into the um, evil here on the insulin drug, doesn't want to cooperate with Sacramento. Eli Lilly did not comment on this story. I don't have a problem with the company making a profit, but I do have a problem when they violate the law trying to maximize their profits because that affects all of us.